You might as well get your copy ready. I have two cameras going. I see myself down there and I see myself up there. Get some copy. I'm going to get some stuff situated here. I got cords in my way. But we got detailed instructions. And we're going to try aiming for $100. Just so you know, I'm lowballing that. Way lowballing that. You're going to make more money than that. I knew I was going to drop that. That's all right. Why? I dropped one down below. That's why we did two. So we have a clean version up top. It'll be available on YouTube. I just got to make sure this one looks excellent. This one, the live, eh, I don't really have anyone. There's no one there. I'm more physical popularity, not Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. I help people physically, not, I don't know. I guess I could ask them to add me on their Facebook, but eh. Giant says candy bars. It's pretty big. It's pretty expensive to ship when you're looking at the 1710 for that box. So we shorten up the bar just a little bit. Now we can lay them sideways. We can fit 24 in a box. Not bad. We'll get into the numbers. I'll be back in a little bit. Cigarettes, get your herb, whatever you need. All right. So we're taking care of some pain issues ourselves. Turn that one over that way. Hi. Just talking to the Facebook one. I don't know if you can notice, but my enthusiasm for this is not really present. I'm sorry. I have no energy for this. This is a shoe string. This gets none of my real energy. The only real energy that this gets is when I'm making these bars. That's the only time I really put any effort of, you only have so much energy for the day. So putting into a video and getting all, you know, excited over something. This is not something to get excited over. Really is just as long as we know that that's clear. Yeah, going out for eight hours per day and hustling candy bars is not what you should have to do. It really it it shouldn't be. So that's that's the thing. That's the thing that I will put energy in. Is where, where I want to go, and where I want to go, uh, I, I, I take whoever that's traveling along with me. So, you buy the bars from me. You go out and sell them. You sell a lot of them. Oh, Brian, I need more bars. So you're throwing all this money towards me to make more bars. You go out, you sell them, so on and so forth. We we could sit there and do that and have this routine progress and me buying fancy shit and clothes and cars and 
but that that's not me. So you don't have to worry about that. That money is going to be refueled to get you more money to not have to damage your body. Because that's what I know. I know all about nerve damage, sciatic nerve, back pain, all that shit. Trust me. Fuck your building character bullshit. Yeah. Work work is work's fucking bullshit. It really is. Don't do it now, but someday you'll sit down and, and think about the things that our body does for a living. It's it's yeah. Make sure you forgive yourself. Don't feel any guilt for that shit. You're forgiven with me, Drip Top. Yeah, just, yeah. The bar selling, that's that's pretty easy. And I'll, and I'll even, if you're in the Green Bay area, we'll go out together, wear some poofy hats, and we'll sell some candy bars. Hey, they're, they're, they're getting value. So someone at work buys a bar, their kid's going to be pretty happy, I mean. That's, that's crazy big, right? So there's value there. But you're, you're, you're not you're not going in there for a sale. Just, just to make sure that that's clear. You're not there to, to catch up on old times, to talk about the weather, talk about the football game. You're, you're, you're not there for that. You will not make any money if you do that shit. You, you, you ain't, you ain't rolling with me. I've done this so many times when I was younger. I used to work for a company. And we used to go out with lotion baskets, <sighs> lotion baskets, candles, uh, black and white TVs. They say lotion baskets, kids books. Diaries. Remember the lotion baskets. All the rest were like kits and oh, and the and the shavers. Oh my god. And I, and I was even honest with the shavers when I got rid of them. And people still bought them. They're like, oh, I hate fucking gym. Yeah, give me two of those. I was like, damn. I'm like, I'm fucking still selling it. I was like, yeah, I tried out the razors. They're not the greatest. Really? But two for ten. Give, give me two. Christmas. That's, that's pretty far out. More, more than once. Oh, oh, the Super Bowl hats. That, that was that was pretty nice. So to give you an idea, and I'm not uh, maybe a little boasting, but not really. It's still really to boast about. Could have been way better. So I was always high roller for this company. That's what they call it, high roller. So if you come in and you have the most money, everybody, yay, high roller. It's all weird energy. So when when I would be high roller, uh, I'd usually only work like a half a day. I would I, I would go balls to the wall from you know the time that we we show up there at six o'clock in the morning. So and usually get out in the field around eight. That's what we call it, out in the field. Get out there about eight. Well, I'd be out there from eight to like. 11, 30, 12, and I have like six, seven hundred dollars and just be like, yeah, I'm going home to get in that. Then I'd come back in and be like, hi, how was your day? Oh, it's great. And I'd be like, you know, 300, 400, 500, 600, 600. And I'd be like eight, nine, a thousand. Yeah. The hats did it. Yeah. The hats. The hats and the TVs. The TVs that was a that was an easy one. So he made a deal which I would never do because that's just 
this because that's what I did. So he made a deal where you can make 50% after five o'clock. If you made any sales after five o'clock, you would make 50% commission. Well, I'd save up a lot of TV sales till after five o'clock. I think it was probably, I think I did it four times and then he was just like, you need to go out with more TVs. And I was just like, that just seems kind of, kind of shysty, but you know, it, it, the only reason why I say that is because they'd always preach about not, not being a salesman. And that's what they always call me. Oh, here comes the salesman. But the, I, I wasn't really doing that. I was still following the criteria of you're not there to sell anything. You're there to offer a deal and leave. That's, that's the whole thing. So six o'clock in the morning and we're leaving and we're getting out in the field at eight. So what are we doing between six and eight o'clock? Well, we're practice pitching. We're practice pitching on each other. So we have confidence when we go in and we're all like, hey, I'm tired. I just really want to know if you want to buy this stuff. Yeah. No one's going to buy that. Yeah. One, you do not want to smell and reek of marijuana. Two, you do not want to reek and smell like any type of cologne or perfume. You do not want that lingering on either the bartender or the owner of the store. Don't want that. You don't want to smell like cigarette smoke either. Goopy hat like this, probably not. Santa hat, yes. So, you have the bar, you show the bar, you get the bar in their hands. I didn't come up with this stuff. It was there before I even got here, so. And I'm not too whipped about it, but it's sales techniques. And this is called fear of loss. So you try to get it in their hands and let them look at it, feel like, oh, hey, that's pretty heavy. And then you take it away and say, yeah, but I got to run. I got this for this. You give them three sets. You can come up with your own sets. You know, hey, two per, you know, two per 15 or whatever you want to sell it at. That's up to you. So we work on our practice pitch. We work on our fear of loss. We work on a deal. This is when I was working for DC Max. We work on a deal of either 5, 10, 15. I think they had a 25 and that was the TV. Or is it 40? I can't remember, it's been so long. You can come up with your own your own thing. Like you can even dress these up. I mean, depending on how much money you want to invest. So let's look at the numbers of law of average, of what we need to hit. Our whole thing was you gotta hit 200 people at least. That, that that's hit it. That, that's the law of average. You hit 200 people you are going to make money. It's not what if, it's not I hope, it's just you are. It's just the law average on a pitch. If your pitch is good, quick and fast, and you can see 200 people, someone, 20 people are going to buy a candy bar. Pretty, pretty simple. So. I got it broken down into into two sections. So let's look at the value of the bar first. 
I don't know if I have it on this sheet or not. Yeah, I do. So let's look at the value of the bar. On average, they're 8.5. Usually, they're always over 8.5. So at store-bought price of 89 cents an ounce for a Butterfinger bar, and that's at a retail store, you're looking at $7.56, five, might as well round up. So $7.57 retail value for a store bought in one. This is handmade. So we're, we're at, we're at $7.57 for value, for store bought value of 89 cents per ounce. That's what we're looking at. And this is a smooth butter. So sitting at an 89 cent uh, per ounce for a store bought in one, you know, 10 cents more, 20 cents more for a hand made one. So let's just, let's just throw less than 50 cents on it and we'll call it $8. But with $8, that, that's a lot of, most people got a 10, here you go. So you start out with a value of their $10 and then you can work your way down. So if you work your way down to eight, you're making $2 and 24 cents in each bar. And that's, that's if we, we, we do it on consignment and I'm not leaving my bars. So I'm, I'm going with you, <laughs> but yeah, I'll show you how, how to sell them. That's not, not sales wise. A dollar forty then, if you do it for five. If you want to make a fast sale and do it for five bucks a bar, five bucks a bar, people are going to go crazy over it. So after. You know, let's say you didn't have any money and you got a full tank of gas and you wanted to try it out and make some money. Let's look at, let's say we just got the bare minimum. Let's say we just got 20. We only made, we only sold 20 bars. We're looking at a net, a net profit of $44 and 80 cents for an eight hour day, which is horrible. It really is. I mean, we could break that down and, and figure out what is that for an hourly wage. That's $5.60. So we're at Five dollars sixty cents per hour. No boss, you the boss. Five sixty per hour at twenty bars at eight dollars each. Okay. It's not bad, right? So if you did 44, or if you did 40, you're at, at 60, 20, 11, 20. You're at 11, 20. So 40 bars puts you at $11.20 per hour for an eight hour shift. Can you sell 40 bars in eight hours? Five bars. And all. So, 
pretty doable, I think. I think I have no problem selling forty bucks. <laughs> I think I think just 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 to toot my horn a little bit. I think I could probably do that in three hours. I really I really do. Less less than three hours. I'm overshooting. Because I, I know how many I sell just, just walking around the building. So, yeah. Um, so, we're at, we're, at, we're at an $8 value. Well, we're here in Wisconsin. And it doesn't matter that we're, we're here in Wisconsin. We're just underneath that farm bill. And, yeah, I guess Wisconsin has a little bit to do with it. Unless it's all over it. But... There is no requirement now for a processing license for CBD. So there's nothing stopping me from putting in CBD, Delta 8, THCO, whatever can be produced from CBD. Some of it I'm not a big fan of because some of it is created in a lab. And I'm not down with that for many reasons. K2, you can see the YouTube video for UK on what it did to those people. Or you can also see Jack Nichols, the man who uh, did experiments on LSD. He explains in his lecture on the, syne the synthetic cannabinoids that are produced and how dangerous they are. And as I said before, we're not putting a whole lot of energy into this because going out for eight hours a day selling candy bars, it's not, not a way to live. So we have the candy bars now with no edibles in it, no CBD, no nothing in it. But yeah, you're still making $2.24 at $8 a bar. A dollar forty. It's selling them at five dollars a bar for now, and then we go over to adding in edibles. Now your increase on making an actual net income is going to increase dramatically. Same weight, same type of bar. Actually, I take that back. Uh, less weight, smaller bar, more in a box less to carry around, and a higher value per bar. Now you're looking at, at, at selling a bar that's, that's worth $40 or $50, $100, I mean, there is no set amount of how much Delta 8 CBD you can put into a bar so we can have fun with this. We can make novelty bars that you just normally can't buy. So... There's a niche, and there's something that you cannot find anywhere. Where are you going to find a giant size edible, or a giant size edible in the shape of a gun, or a shape of a knife, or, or later on I'll get an airbrush. But this is only temporary. We're only uh, the only thing that I'm trying to do, and I want to say all of us, but. What I'm trying to do is trying to get to a farm. And eventually, I want to take whoever's been trailing along with me that way to make more money with less work and less damage to your body. Otherwise, what's the sense of even being here? I mean, to, to sit there and work until you're 70, whatever, and have a body that's completely trashed. It, it just makes no sense. There's no logic in that whatsoever. So, clean bars right now, nothing in it. We do a CBD one, makes more money, bigger, larger amounts of money. Because you figure you're. You're, you're doing this now. Get get those names. Get those contacts. Get a page set up so you can say, hey, just so you know, I'll have edibles later on. Let them know that. 
There's nothing illegal, illegal about it. It's legal in all 50 states. It's federally legal underneath the Farm Bill. It is actually illegal to stop the sale of a CBD crop. It is against the law. So to give you the numbers of what I'm looking at, I'm not, I'm not, like this law average thing, this is just to get you going, to get you certain things that I want to walk you through. Going around and selling bars from business to business is a nice way to, just to generate uh, more people on, on Monster Bar on Facebook, as well as more for your individual little business. I can't carry these bars. I don't have a car. So, with the edibles, now, instead of going around and having, like, you still, that's still a side hustle. Going business, don't, we ain't knocking it. We're just, we're just climbing up the ladder. So later on, once we have the edibles, now you have a big giant case of edibles, let's say. Now you can start going from head shop to head shops. How many head shops are in your neck of the woods, just in your little area? And then you figure you can map it out and figure out which areas you want to drive to. And, and you want, you want a, a, a sheet, you want one sheet. One sheet, nice pictures of the bars, uh, your, your your minimum orders of, of what you want, like minimum order, $150 worth, minimum order, $250, whatever you want. And then you're going to also want a uh, recertification or reseller's permit as well. If you're going to make this into a business, it's $20. Get yourself a, a, a seller's permit, and then you can get a reseller's permit from from the guy that you sell it to, so you're not titled to pay the taxes on it. He is, because he bought the bars. He's collecting the taxes. So one of the first things I ran into when I was a little kid, when I had my, my, my tax ID number, which I was eight years old when I got mine. I was selling t-shirts and sand pads. Zippos that broke. I let him know. I'd be like, "You do tricks with that. That thing's gonna break. You can get your money back." I let him know. I was honest, and they still bought it. They were cool looking though. Looked like a zippo. Acted like a zippo. You do that that trick with it, like you do with a zippo, where you push down with your thumb and it flicks open. You do that. That lids that lids coming off. Yeah, a cover sheet. A breaking down of like the flavors we got, depending on what I decide to do. But to give you the numbers that I'm after. So, regular bars, now we're getting into the edibles. I want to be able to do a thousand bars per day, all by myself making them. So, that's 30,000 bars to give you an idea of the volume that I'll have to get rid of of high quality edibles. There's a lot of people in pain, so I don't I don't see why not. You know pain and inflammation is the center of all disease. And then when you do your research work on the first medicines, they were all derived from cannabis. So might as well do something that's worthwhile and is going to give joy to someone's life and make their their life more enjoyable with less taxation to their liver and everything else. The research work on lab rats and alcohol with CBD, they drink less alcohol when they have CBD in their system. So right there, you can help people you know, wean themselves off of drinking. It's not like I can't make a CBD drink. I can do that too. I think we cover everything that we need to cover. I think we got everything. 
I mean, it don't get up to the cannabis farm. And that's, that's all me. That's all me. But this cannabis farm is going to be much, much more than that. So once we get the farm, I want to break out little, little uh, areas where, where people can sleep and have a cheaper way of living. I don't know. It just seems like the right thing to do. Well, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. So if you want to hustle bars, make 28% of the sales of said bars, or basically, you know, you're buying them for three fifty a bar. You sell them for five bucks. You're making a buck fifty on each one. That's 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 pretty decent. And I'm gonna try and get it even better with an edible. Same, less weight, way less weight. Because I'll buy the actual molds and make smaller bars, and it makes more sense. You're there. You're there for an edible, not to get jacked up with a bunch of sugar and a bunch of bad things that you don't really need. So we'll make them smaller and higher dosage of CBD, Delta-8, THCO, THCP, THCV. There's so many different ones, but we'll make them and list everything on there so a person knows what they're at least getting. Yeah. And the, the, I'd give them everything. Hey, this was created in a lab. I'm not too whipped about it. Like, I'm, I'm pretty honest. I'd rather be that way and be able to sleep well and I'd be like, make sure you do your research work. Where I'm getting my Delta 8 from, it's pretty reliable and it's tested. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that they're doing it correctly. Otherwise, they, they, wouldn't be, they wouldn't be still in business. So if you're willing to go out for eight hours and give it a shot, I'm willing to go out there with you. I'll, I'll, I'll carry some bars. I can't carry a whole lot, but I'll carry some bars and I'll show you how to do your pitch. You can just sit there and watch me. You just All you're going to do is when we go inside of the building, you just hang back and don't say anything and I'll do everything. I will sell your bars for you. I don't know how much more you can get for a, a business in a box with a dude. You know, I have no problem going out there. It's just I don't have no, I have no car. So and that whole walking with that extra weight with my back and the nerve damage in the arms, we, we can't have that. It actually makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah, so I got to do this instead. So it, if you're willing to go out with a car, yeah, I'm willing to carry a couple bars. That's that's a lot less steps than what I'm doing right now because it's it's. I mean, I'm on the 10th floor. Carrying the bars just from here all the way down to the front door is a challenge. That's how bad the nerve damage is. But there's 200 people here, so there's quite a few. 200 people plus there's caregivers that come in and come out. So selling a bar is pretty easy just walking through the hallway. I don't like doing that, though, because everybody here is on a fixed income. Somebody here gets a bar for free or four bucks or whatever they got to change. But I, I can't I can't be doing that a whole lot because I can only do 25 a day. And this is all inflamed. So we need to get molds so I can do thousands a day with less pain and inflammation and everything else.